it, it's awesome. It's fun to make music. It was a bonding time, but at the same time, we get to raise awareness and and uh, shed light on some things that we're upset about. Hey everyone, my name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time on the channel, hit subscribe right now. Whenever a member of the Cavalera Rock Dynasty releases a new album, a lot of people are gonna talk about it. And obviously this time with Go Ahead and Die, we have two members of the Cavalera clan, Max Cavalera and his son Igor. To learn all about this release, I sat down with Igor. Igor, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Um, we are, when we're recording this, about two and a half weeks away from the launch. Um, this is obviously a special project for you. Does that make you more excited, more nervous, maybe even a little scared? What's going on right now? Uh, I'm excited, definitely. Uh, I think the I think the record is good. I'm, I'm proud of how it came out and everything. So um, now that we're this close, uh, it's just excitement from here on out. Yeah. Uh, all, all the nerves and all that has passed already. Um, I'm ready, ready to unleash it on the world for sure. There's already been quite a bit of media attention for the project. Now, that is not to address the metaphorical elephant in the room, not uh, unlike any other project that includes one or more Cavaleras. When this then happens, does you, can your dad give you coaching on how to deal with all of this? Because there's gonna be a lot more attention and potentially also scrutiny and, and all that kind of stuff around the release that you do with your father. Does, does he coach you on that? Um, not really. Um, I, to be honest, I learned how to deal with that stuff pretty young. Um, I, yeah. My first band went on the road when I was 15. Um, and people are harsh, you know, <laughs> so people, people are mean out there in the real world. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I learned to, to try to, to shrug it off uh, pretty young. Um, doing music at all, I feel like it's easy to, to become in my dad's shadow and uh, or people want me to fill in his shoes and stuff like that you know and I just I've always just been like I don't care what you think I'm gonna make the music that I want to and, yeah, yeah. and keep doing my thing so when it came to do go ahead and die um, of course that was an obvious uh, uh, like you said elephant in the room you know it's gonna yeah. get attention because because my dad is in it and it's it's gonna be on a major label because he signed to a major label and stuff like that you know so um, I think it was obvious that some of that was going to come with it, so I just right. uh, uh, put up, you know, put up my my hide and, <laughs> you know, wore my thickest hide that I could, and uh, I think I've been dealing with it okay. Nobody's yeah, yeah, been yeah. too, uh, no, nobody said anything I haven't heard already, so. <laughs> uh, you said just earlier that, um, you know, you just want to regardless of what people might expect or think or, or say, I just want to make the music that I that I want to make. And, and that music on this record, at least, is clearly influenced by, um, well, early 90s hardcore, but definitely a lot of 80s extreme metal. We definitely do hear that, you know, Circle of Tyrants from Celtic Frost there. Um, Carnivore is a name that pops up uh, for me as well. I would say early hate breed uh, as well. You know, where does that, passion with with raw you know first wave second wave extreme metal comes from? i'd say i was young when i got into metal i was probably like 10 when i first started mm -hmm. getting into like black sabbath and judas priest and like bands like that you know starter starter bands you could say yeah, yeah, yeah. um so really by the time i was 13 um just punk and, and metal and, and skateboarding and, and stuff like that for me as a young teenager was all i wanted to do um, and like you said, I wasn't born when all of it was coming out, but I was born during the MySpace era. And yeah, yeah. MySpace gave you access to like every band on the planet. Um, so as a, as a young teenager, I just spent a lot of, once I got into those couple of starter bands, um, I wanted to further my knowledge and I wanted to, to get into stuff. Um, so 
like a lot of the the early stuff I got into was was punk and first wave metal. Um, you know, punk bands like like Discharge and Bad mm-hmm. Brains and, and even into crust stuff like Doom and, and electro hippies and stuff like that. I found and and on the metal side, I yeah, I loved like Hellhammer and uh, you know early death metal. Uh, you know, Scandinavian death metal like Entombed and stuff like that was huge for me. Um, so you know, like I said, it, it was kind of how I got started in metal. And yeah, funny yeah. enough, it was how my how my father got started in metal too. Was bands like Venom and Hellhammer and Discharge um, influenced him to make metal. So what we've kind of noticed through doing this record is there's a generational kind of bridge um, yeah. between between his generation who was there sort of creating this wave of music and then my generation, which you had to go out of your way to get into it or to find it or to go go back in time so yeah, to speak. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we realized we had the same interest despite the years between us and the generations between us and um, to us this record is sort of a, a symbolism of that of the old school style is very much still alive and very much still appreciated by, by younger people like me um, but yeah I mean I just I got into metal really young and, and mm-hmm. I loved the extreme stuff like the first time I heard a grind band like Napalm Death or Carcass, I was like, this is this is awesome. It's absolutely nasty, you know, and, and that's what I that's what I really liked. Yeah. Um so to, to when it came time to do this band, we wanted to just go back to our early influences and stuff like that. And funny enough it was kind of the same bands for both yeah. of us. We wanted to make it an album, you know. Yeah. We, we it, in our opinion, the older records are meant to be meant to be enjoyed as records. This is as well. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different mix-ups and, and crazy changes that I don't think people are going to expect. And uh, yeah. even even random influences of uh, industrial and, and stuff like that pokes its way in and. Uh, yeah. Almost in that na- the nail bomb kind of sense, you know, um, it's kind of similar. So yeah, no, the listener is going to go on a on a journey listening to it for sure. <laughs> okay. uh, well, I mean, now that you mentioned nail bomb, regardless of the music, for sure, from a from a from an atmosphere, from a vibe, from from what at the time in the early '90s your dad wanted to do with that project as as as, as, as like a protest record as well. A lot of mm-hmm. there's a lot of similarities that we see now with Go Ahead and Die. Um, unfortunately, Nailbomb was also a very short. Well, it it, it was a short-lived project, right? Um, yeah. It was a once in a lifetime kind of thing. How do you look at Go Ahead and Die in that sense? Because, you know, for example, are we going to see the three or four or five people, depending on how many you you, you would need for that in reality? Uh, will we see you on a stage at one point? Will you support uh, this 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 release with potential touring? I certainly think so. I think we'll play shows eventually. Um, maybe not as soon as the release. That's only a few weeks away. Sure. Um, you know, but definitely down the line, uh, we want to play live. Uh, we want. We've all talked about making sure to prioritize it. Um, you know, we're, we're all in multiple bands. That's yeah. just kind of how it is nowadays. Um, you know, but we, we have talked about doing it and finding the time, and we, we certainly want it to be um, a band, not just a, a studio yeah. band. Yeah. Because um, I mean, this the album itself is is almost intended to be live to a degree, anyways. So yeah, yeah it's it's definitely it, the the message is is much more like energetic and, and passionate in the live set. So we wanna. We want to do it in punk bars, honestly. I mean, we've all talked about, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, obviously if a festival wants us to play, that's cool and we'll go do it, but we want to play like small 100-seat hundred, hundred clubs and stuff like that. Because yeah, um, yeah, yeah. that, that's just, that's the way that this style of music is going to just come off the most powerful, sure. in my opinion. Both you and your father have described how the whole writing process and also the recording process went quite organic um, and that it was a very creative time for, for you and him uh, to spend. Does that then mean that there are more than 11 songs 
Jasper go ahead go ahead and die <laughs> already and that we might see more material in the future? Uh, realistically, uh, there there were songs that actually yeah. didn't make it onto the album. Um, we we did a lot of different versions when it came to, to creating this, and um, we took a lot of different steps. And uh, you know, the, we haven't said anything concrete, but uh, already a few times, uh, even in interviews and stuff, we've kind of said like, "Hey, if the time is there and uh, yeah, yeah. the the feeling is right, that yeah, we, we could definitely do it." Um, and yeah, uh, we, we might actually have a few that are still demos that just we didn't end up using that might turn into something. So uh, okay. you, you never know, you know. <laughs> Yet again, I would say an, an, an old school, a modern old school sounding album that has the, um, you know, mixing stamp of approval by Arthur Risk on it, who is fast becoming one of the most influential people in metal today behind the scenes. Um, he's obviously not new to working uh, with your father as well. I, he was with Cavalier Conspiracy involved as well, but even, even with the very live recording and, and trying to be as straightforward as possible um were you still surprised to see what a guy like arthur can then take your material and take it to the next level absolutely uh, arthur's a wizard i call him literally um he can you know he can take a dog shit and make it look good if he <laughs> wants to you know um so he definitely did uh you know the the songs are the songs that they are and the, of course the structuring and nothing like that yeah changed but no he certainly he knows how to get uh like a thrash sound i guess you could say he he seems very uh at least in my opinion he seems influenced by that style of music and seems to work in that style of music yeah. a lot um so he did he did he definitely took it to the to the next level he did some of the um, it was our ideas, but he did some of the sampling and stuff like that, like the noises, um, okay. and put them together. You know, we would come up with the idea like, oh, you know, take uh, take a bunch of news clippings or something like that, and then he would sort of put it together. So he, he was definitely involved. Uh, we, you know, talked on the phone, and we wanted to record with him, but I, I think he was either with Chromags or with... Uh, with Power Trip before Riley passed, um, so he, he actually couldn't record the record, but we wanted him to be there for the the recording yeah. as well. Uh, but he still did his magic with the mix, and um, I like how it came out. You know, to me, it sounds like it's almost it's live. You know, it sounds like a couple people playing music. You know, it doesn't yeah, it doesn't yeah. sound fake or or uh, overproduced. You know, and that's very important to me. I, I like organic music. I like a I like nice sound. You know. Nice shitty sound, if that makes sense. Um, that makes sense. You know, <laughs> it. Well, you know, my father and I, we were talking about the other day about how it's it's actually kind of hard to to get a real live sound nowadays. It's, right. It's actually easier to put things to a click track, and it's easier to to put gates and all this stuff on it to make it sound better. Um, it's actually hard to get a crusty sounding record. You do have to take some steps to achieve that and uh, at the end of the day i'm proud of how it came out how we recorded it and how arthur mixed and mastered it um yeah, I, yeah. you know i don't think there's anything i would have changed with it Normally, it's me Normally, as expected for sure uh, you know from from not just your dad but any cavalera family project if you will uh we expect um critical uh, uh, lyrics uh, looking at injustices uh, throughout. I know that you guys are, are are highlighting a number of issues that are very dear to you uh, as well. Uh, and wrote guilt about uh, homeless people or people without uh, a safe place. Being here in Canada, looking into the States in the last few years, um, you guys have definitely gone through some, 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 uh, some turbulent Year, uh, years and, and, and maybe and to some extent still. Um, it's easy to see how that inspires somebody like yourself. Uh, how do you see that evolve? Because I think it was either yourself or your dad that said, you know, this is for us not just, we don't like the album, we don't just like the album, 
this for us is also an important album for these times to be released and to, to have a voice. Um, first of all, my first question would be, are there specific, uh, on the songs that haven't been released yet, are there specific themes that you guys highlight that are really important for you? Um, and then as a follow-up question, um, how did you um, experience these last few years where it seems like a lot of things that were bubbling under the surface, you know, opened up and, and, and are you hopeful for what's ahead? How do you see things evolve right now? I mean, I personally, you know, it's a day-to-day -day thing. I feel like um, nobody woke up on June 6th, June 6th and predicted that the Capitol would have got stormed, you know? So it's, yeah. it's one of those things and, and with the political turmoil and, and the division in America um, between politics and things like that is very noticeable. Um, it's very, it, like you said, it's, it's bubbled up to the surface. Um, so yeah, I mean, in all reality, it, it, we do get stressed about these things. We do get frustrated. Um, you know, even if it's, if, even if it's not something that has directly came at us, we still want to show ourselves as allies and, and things like that. You know what I mean? So it really, it, it comes down to raising awareness and yeah. and stuff like that and I, I think the only way that we can be helpful is if more people start raising awareness you know um, pointing out messed up things that are going on right now um, in, in America and around the world um, you know obviously 2020 was was a little crazy for Americans in particular um, with, with George Floyd's murder but uh, this is a global thing you know police mm -hmm. brutality happens in many, many more countries than the United States. Um, For sure. You know, uh, just even like we, we touch on stuff as, as out there as mental illness and and uh, just like isolation and, and stuff like that. So we definitely, we do explore, you know, a, a ton of different things on the record. Um, yeah. You know, everything from the pandemic itself to mental health and, and mental uh, awareness to like homelessness on roadkill. Um, Punisher is about public shootings. Um, you know, people who get guns and just go kill innocent people. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to bring awareness to it and it, maybe it comes off in a dark way or maybe it comes off in an aggressive way, but in all reality, it's actually an album about unity and about, right. um, you know, ri rising above these things, um, you know, uh, ri rising above things like racism, rising above things like judgment and things like that, and just working to better the planet and stuff. But, you know, obviously, whenever politics en enter the room, it always can get a little stuffy for people or a little preachy or yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff like that. So we, we wanted to just hit on topics that we didn't feel like were going to necessarily even cause uh, division or anything i think we should all agree that cops shouldn't be killing people i think we should all agree that you shouldn't go out and shoot up a grocery store for no reason yeah. you know um so that that's where we sort of stood on it is you know if if the if the themes and the topics that you're addressing are justified then there's no reason to worry about scrutiny and 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 stuff like that you know and and once again, uh, as you said, it's a, it's my dad doing a record. He's written "Refuse, Resist," "Anti-Cop," "Back to the Primitive." Says you know, fuck all you politics in it. That was twenty years ago. Um, you know, so these are definitely ideals that he's already spoken about and and been been a part of and been been part of the movement for. Um, so I was raised with these mm -hmm. being his kid. You know, so when it came time to do a record, and it was in the style of like Discharge and Napalm Death and and terrorizer bands that were talking about this same stuff uh, a couple decades ago you know we we wanted to capture a similar uh image and vibe and i think that decades from now people will look at that record and see sides of you know last year that that are history then you know and yeah. we we managed to capture it and i'm, I'm glad that we did you know so it's awesome. It's fun to make music. It was a bonding time, but at the same time, we get to raise awareness and and uh, shed light on some things that we're upset about, you know. And, yeah. and that's that's art right there. That's expression, in my opinion. The 
have been a few videos. There's been some some extra special footage as well around the album. Um, anything else that the fans should know about uh, now that the release is getting very close? Um, and while we wait for that potential future tour, which by the way has to come to Canada, obviously. Yeah, um, I will. <laughs> what uh, what what uh, what else do we need to keep our eyes open for? You know, obviously the album itself, it's out on June 11th. We have a really cool release coming with it. Um, we have like cool collector stuff, like different vinyl variations. Um, we're actually even doing a cassette, which is like a blood splattered looking, uh, the white cause it's really cool looking. Anyways, um, you know, we have that coming out. So obviously pick up the record. Um, as you mentioned, tons of uh, behind the scenes music videos, things like that. Um, we've actually talked about doing a digital show in the meantime so people can see the intensity of the live performance um you know so we're gonna have that in the works uh sometime after the record is out um and otherwise uh we'll just keep pushing stuff out there and then hopefully hit the road by the end of the year um things are getting a little bit better slowly yep. down here with vaccines rolling out and stuff like that um so i think it's really only a matter of time until we're playing again and uh, hitting the road and I definitely can't wait to come in Canada come up to Canada you know um, hopefully this time in July uh, <laughs> I went there in, I went there in February last time and it was uh, pretty brutal for me I'm from Arizona so <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know but uh, yeah just keep your eyes out for us we're gonna hit the road and and hopefully be doing stuff by the end of the year and in the meantime we have a lot of digital stuff uh, on the way so we'll we'll be keeping Sounds you good. entertained as much as we can Sounds good. And if you make it in the summer, we'll have some, you know, cold craft brews ready for you. And if it's in Perfect. the winter, we'll have hot chocolate. How about that? <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good, man. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, Igor, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. I wish you all the best with the release. Uh, it's very exciting. And uh, thank you again for your time. Yeah. No, likewise. It was a lot of fun. Have a good day. Thank you. for watching this video click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel